It is a really good time for the firearms laser industry. In the past few years, the market has dramatically opened up from the $3,000 plus military contract devices to a wide variety of options available on the civilian market. I went out and got my hands on the most recommended and popular lasers. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at the lasers you can get for under $1,000. In my mind, Somo Gear is the one that really kicked off this IR laser industry revolution. They make airsoft clones of military IR lasers, and it turns out that airsoft LARP quality is actually good enough for a lot of real gun LARPing. At under 500 bucks, you can roll the dice on a clone a few times before you approach the price of an actual non-clone version of the laser. The PEC-15 clone is the classic Somo Gear product, but the plastic housing doesn't lend itself very well to long-term durability. These are kind of known to break at that point. Their Engal clone uses a metal housing. This version has kind of taken over as the Somo Gear version to buy. So while I have both, I'm going to be sticking with the Engal clone to represent Somo Gear in this video. Now the Hollow Sun is much more mainstream than Somo Gear. While it is also made in China, their laser isn't a blatant copyright infringement. Hollow Sun has made lasers for a while and their new Iris series really stepped it up compared to their legacy products. We have the Iris GR3 for this video and this comes in at around $900. The Steiner D-Ball is the only laser in this comparison that actually is made in the United States. This is the first IR laser I ever owned. I have the I2 model, which basically means it's just the laser version, visible and IR, no illuminator, and these can be had under $900. I also have a Russian Purst 4. Same kind of story as the D-Ball. This is just a laser, no illuminator. I bought this a while ago before the Ukraine war. If you go online, it looks like you can still get them from Ivan's website, but but good luck with customs. Who knows if that'll actually go through. This is the only laser here that I have ever had any battery issues with. It has extremely bad parasitic drain. Pretty much whenever I wanna use this, I have to put in a new battery. It is also the only one on the list where the controls aren't in English. NK is the IR mode, and K is the visible mode. This one comes in at just over $800. The SMS Trinity is the new kit on the block and also the cheapest. At $350, you could buy 10 of these for the same price as a real mall. This is the cheapest laser we're going to be comparing. And finally, we have the RIX RIP 3C. This is their version of the Laser Speed M6 TRV. It is literally the same device, just white labeled RIX, and with a couple of minor improvements I'll get into, this one comes in at just over $900. And just for transparency's sake, RIX did send me this laser for free. All the rest I paid for out of pocket. So let's get some quick stats out of the way. For weight, we have the Sumo Gear and Hollow Sun tied for the lightest, and then it goes Purst, D-Ball, Trinity, and RIX. For overall size, we have the Hollow Sun as the smallest, then Purst, Sumo Gear, SMS Laser, D-Ball, then RIX. For mounting, pretty much all of these use a standard crossbar. The RIX laser uses a Torx bit instead of a flathead, which I'm not a huge fan of. The SMS Trinity uses an Allen key, which is even worse than a Torx. This isn't something that you should really be messing with in the field, but if you have to, not requiring a special bit is nice, and my preference would be to just have everything be a flathead. Another thing about the SMS and the Purst is that they put the recoil lug too far forward, so you may run into mounting issues in some situations. The D-Ball came with a QD mount, but unfortunately it kind of sucks, particularly if you want to put a red dot on top using one of like the Ferrotech adapters. It just really isn't reliable or durable enough to maintain an adequate zero, so I switched it over to an ADM QD mount and shouldn't have any issues with this. In terms of switches, all these use the standard crane plug. Plenty of aftermarket switches for them other than the Purst. The Purst uses a proprietary Russian plug that is different and good luck getting a switch for that if yours breaks like mine did. Now for visible lasers, they all pretty much work as expected. It is truly ridiculous how bright the Somo Gear is at full power. The Purst and the Somo Gear had pretty bad spill and the dot quality around it wasn't the best, but the rest were totally fine. Now for zeroing, the Somo Gear and Trinity have really small adjustment slots. Also, having the IR and visible laser slaved together should just be a requirement. Having to zero it twice, like with the D-Ball, is very annoying. RAX and Hollow Sun have the best zero adjustments out of this bunch. For the mode selector, other than it being in Russian, the purse is actually very simple to use. The D-Ball selector is very loosey-goosey on mine, and it can be hard to select a specific mode if you're in a rush or have gloves on. The 
hollow sun selector on the back is very stiff. I think that the levers could be a bit larger so you could actually get some leverage and grab them or if you have gloves on. The Somo gear knob is fine. The SMS Trinity is very goopy and it doesn't click into position. It feels like a stiff dial that's like smooth but it doesn't give you any resistance when it's in a particular mode. One of the weakest points about that Trinity is the dial adjuster. My favorite selector is the RIX. The switch is actually long enough that you can grab it and the three blades also makes it very easy to adjust. It also has a little LED indicator on the back to let you know if you're in green for visible or red for IR. The RIX also has the ability to replace the battery cover with a visible flashlight. This light sucks. You shouldn't run this as your main light, but for basically no added weight, you get an emergency backup. So I'd consider that a bonus. To adjust the IR illuminator, you have a dial on the Sumo Gear and RAX and a slider on the Hollow Sun and Trinity. For some reason, the Trinity has a lockout button in the middle that just sucks. You have to push this down before you can slide it forward or back. The Sumo Gear and RAX dial work fine, but the Hollow Sun slider is by far the best adjustment for your illuminator out of all of these. So let's talk about the actual performance. The night I was able to go outside and film, it happened to be snowing. Here's a long exposure picture of the general setup. We have a high spec white phosphor PBS 14 on the left and a M1 Pro digital monocular on the right, two targets 50 meters away. I'll go through the results now on screen and you can pause. This is the RIX IR laser. All right, this is the RIX illuminator. All right, this is the RIX laser and illuminator. This should be Holosun IR laser. Holosun IR laser high power. Holosun dual illumination. This is the Trinity IR laser. This is the Trinity IR illuminator. Dual illumination. Engal, Sumo Gear Engal, low, high illumination, dual illumination, Sumo Gear Engal. This is pursed low power. This is pursed max power. Here is D-Ball, low power. Here is D-Ball, high power. People like to get nitpicky, but in reality, any of these would work fine. That said, I noticed the IR illuminator on the RIX underperformed compared to the others, and the Somo Gear laser was still way too bright, even on the low setting. People seem to think that the full power lasers are always better. I think mostly because they're harder to get and more expensive, therefore they must be better. But Think of it like a red dot. Yes, there are specific situations where you want a red dot extremely bright on like an afternoon sunny day, but most of the time you turn that dot down to your environment conditions so that you can be accurate. There is a similar phenomenon with IR lasers. If you put too much laser energy onto a target, it spills all over and you lose accuracy. You go from being able to distinguish the actual center chest to hit them center mass-ish. The overwhelming majority of the time I use an IR laser, I have it on low power settings so that I can actually discriminate my hits more and be accurate on target. In my opinion, people want the full power lasers just because they can't have them and they're harder to get. It adds negligible capability and oftentimes it's actually a detriment. This also gave me the opportunity to see how well they all performed when frozen and covered in ice and snow. In terms of function in the snow, the left side mode selector on the Trinity froze up on me and I couldn't get a good grip on it. And the top illuminator lockout slider was much harder to use with the snow in the way. Generally just not a fan of the way the user interface is on that device. The RIX and Somo Gear both struggled with the twist dial. It's kind of a finicky thing to do with gloves on and in the snow. The Hollow Sun Iris had no issues with the illuminator slider, but the levers on the back were very hard to use in the snow. And with gloves on, it is very difficult to get a good grip on them because they're so stiff and adjust them too small to grab. The purse had absolutely no issues in the snow. I'm sure there's a Russian winter joke in there somewhere. The D-Ball also surprisingly had no control issues in the snow. Somo Gear top dial also had no issues. 
and the RIX back dial had no issues. So in conclusion, what should you actually get? Well, the Purst and D-Ball are pretty much legacy designs at this point. If you get a good deal on one, they work, but if you're shopping new, I just don't see much value there. I would definitely get a D-Ball before I get a Purst. I think the Purst is probably the worst laser on this list. The Somo Gear started this whole industry revival, but I don't think there is much future in their blatant IP infringement. Support and shipping times are also pretty lackluster. There just isn't a need to roll the dice on a Somo Gear clone anymore with all the other options available. The three lasers I would take a look at are the SMS Trinity, Holosun Iris, and RAX. If you're on a budget, it is really hard to beat the value of the Trinity even with its flaws. The extra $500 would buy you a better laser, but that budget is probably better spent elsewhere in your kit. That could get you a nicer sling, flashlight, or red dot, or maybe even all three. If you have the budget, stepping up to the RAX or Holosun would be my recommendation. You get a better product and better support if you ever run into an issue. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments and thanks for watching. That's it. I'm going inside. It is freezing out.